Welcome back to the shop for another one of our weekly updates. Uh, we're just getting started this week. Um, don't have a lot of filming to do this week. Got to kick these lights on here. Hold on. Last week, uh, we were finishing up the... Uh, ooh, it's really dark back in here. <laughs> Hold on, let me turn these lights on. There we go. All better. All right, so last week we were filming up, finishing up filming on the CarCraft TV build. Uh, I have, this week I got a little bit of prep to do for a couple different shows. I got a prep for uh, upcoming four-wheeler episode that we're gonna shoot in three weeks. I gotta get uh, the Toyota in here by the end of the week and start prepping the engine coming out of it because that's one of the next shows we're gonna do. I need to go ahead and do some prep on the Colorado this week because uh, we're going to be filming on it in a week. So I think it's next week that we film on it. And in the meantime, I also have to do a little bit of work on my 05 uh, Cat Eye Chevrolet, which is on four-wheeler. And I'll show you it when we go to do some work on it. But I'm going to kick things off today. I honestly, I just have a bunch of tires I have to mount. And uh, I bit the bullet and bought a tire machine. It's not the best tire machine, but it gets the job done for what i got to do. Nine times out of ten, I'm doing beadlocks. Um, but when I'm not doing bead locks, I have to do, uh, I need a tire machine. So I just bought a super cheapy one just to get it done. Uh, so I want to get all those tires mounted mainly just for the space, because as it is right now, I got a giant pile of tires and a giant pile of wheels. And when we film that for TV, I only need one tire and one wheel. And I've got a pile of five tires and five wheels for two different projects. So I'm going to consolidate them, basically save me some space. When you're mounting up these uh, Method Race Wheels bead grip wheels, sometimes what'll happen is the last little bit of the outer bead, it won't seat right away. I already got 50 pounds of air in these tires. So what I will do is I'll actually let them just sit for a while uh, and then I'll come back and uh, hit them with a little bit more air just to seat that bead. Uh, what we're actually doing, I can show you, I got one out of a box over here. The bead grip is um, these little grooves right here you can see there's basically a large lip right here and that's why when i lube them up not only do i lube up the outer lip like normal but also lube up this inner lip with the lube because you the tire is basically going to jump over this lip the inner bead has a smaller one so it usually pops that inner bead first and then you've got these little grooves you can hear them I'll drive my fingernail across them those grooves basically bite into the actual bead of the tire itself basically locks into it um, and that's what keeps the bead locked onto the wheel. I've had these on a couple rigs. Um, I'm super impressed with how well they work, uh, airing them down to like, you know, I've aired them down to eight PSI. Uh, these are going on Ultimate Adventure, so I'm gonna test them thoroughly. I'm gonna take them down to like six and wheel the rig and see how it works, and then I'll air them back up and drive them. Um, but we'll see, uh, we'll see how well they work. You know, Method says you can air them down as much as a regular bead lock. Um, I'm always a little nervous doing that, but Ultimate Adventure is the perfect test because that's exactly where this thing's going to shine. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take them out on this trip. I'll air them super low. I'll try them at eight. I'll try them at six. I'll try them. I might even go down to four. I'll just air them down a bunch of different uh, pressures and see how they, they work. The thing is the brand new tires, you know, the, it's going to take a while for the sidewalls to break in. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably air them down pretty low first day of wheeling and then I'll probably find that sweet spot as we move throughout the week. Uh, but I love how they look and I love how they work. I've got them on my Toyota. And I love that sort of slab look. Um, that's su it's a super strong wheel too. So I'm super excited to have these on the rig for UA. 
So now that I've got those tires mounted, you know, those measurements taken, and those parts ordered, uh, a couple things I want to jump on right now. I need to do some finish welding on the uh, Colorado frame before uh, we jump on to the next filming session. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a little time lapse action right here. Uh, we're going to film a time lapse of just me welding. Uh, we got a really cool time lapse rig here uh, in the shop slash studio slash shop, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's from Rhino. It's called an Arc 2. I'll show you once I get it all set up, but it's actually pretty neat. So basically my plan is basically set the time lapse up so it starts at the back of the chassis, moves forward to the front of the chassis. I just got a couple things to set in place intact, and then I'll be able to do a whole bunch of welding. It'll be a really cool shot. To finish up. Just finishing up this time lapse uh, right now you can get an idea of the setup that I use basically it's a, like I said it's a Rhino arc so it's a Rhino arc we use a DSLR to shoot it and the nice thing is the arc allows us to uh, basically come up with really cool sort of like moving time lapses that I really like uh, one thing that I have to do sometimes is basically take a break from the time lapse because the camera hasn't got to the point where I need to weld right now so what I'm doing right now is just basically taking a break I'm gonna wait for that camera to get where I'm gonna be and that way it makes that make sure the time lapse is good we can fix that in post we can go and just crip, crop out those dead frames where there's nobody in it it's not a big deal because uh, it's just moving it'll have like a little jump cut but it'll be kind of fun or we can do a little warp on it speed it up lots of things we can do but uh, yeah I do a lot of time lapses when I'm in the shop by myself just because that's something that's very easy for me to knock out here uh, I'm gonna be welding this frame out anyway so I might as well set the camera up and grab some uh, grab some video for the uh, Motor Trend crew, that way they can use it uh, in the show. At this point on the Colorado, I'm pretty much at a stopping point until we get uh, Christian in here to film. I went ahead and put the frame back up underneath the body, got all the body mounts in place where they're gonna go, retest fit the engine because I wanted to double check to make sure that it cleared uh, steering gear. I'm using this PSC, this is an older version of the Ram Assist. I've literally had it just laying around. It's a JK box. So just wanted to make sure that uh, um, there's room for it with the motor and there is. Um, if there wasn't, what I could actually do is switch to a right-hand drive JK box and then move this JK box to the outside of the frame. I'd obviously have to clearance this bracket a little bit but it looks good where it's at um i this was on my willie's wagon i took it off to put on uh the big bore box and so that's literally just been sitting on the shelf and this is just a good project to use it on just using it up on this one right here uh these bottom mounts i'll go ahead and i'll actually basically cut a notch in here put a piece of tube in weld it up and then that bolt will go through that tube and i'll do the same thing up here so the bolt will go through that tube right here i made have to do a little bit of grinding right there but i'm happy with that so we're gonna hit pause on the colorado like i said until we're ready to film on it next uh, there's one last thing I think I'm gonna make and that is I'm gonna build some brackets that are gonna hold this front the front bumper in place uh, I'm gonna make a custom front tube bumper uh, and I got a cool idea as to how I'm gonna do it what I basically have are these little brackets I've already drawn them up in Bentec I'll show you how these are gonna work I'm actually gonna cut out four of these but I'm gonna cut two out first just to see how they look and then I'll show you my plan for this once I have them cut out but all I got to now is fire up the machine and get out
here you can see uh, what this is going to look like. Basically, I've got one of these pieces here, and I've got one over here. I'm going to run basically a tube that's going to come across here. I'll put another tube across here. I'll plate this on the back side so I can still see these cool little cutouts on here. I'll plate it on the back side, and that's where the winch fair lead will mount. And then I'll run a plate across the top side of this right here or maybe the bottom side, uh, maybe the bottom side, run right on the bottom side, and then the winch will just sit on top of that. I think it'll give it a really cool look. Actually, I think I'll run a plate across the top side, that'll get the winch up high enough so the fair lead can come out here. If I put the winch down, that eh, might be all right. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see what it looks like. Basically, and then I'll probably do, when I, once I put the tube across here, and then I'm gonna run other tubes, other tubes out here, basically come back like that, come around the edge of the fender and then I'll run one tube that'll basically come down pick this up kind of be a combination tube bumper plate steel I think it'll be a good look um, you know it kind of just finishes up the front of the Colorado the goofy thing about the Colorado is the grill ends up so high because in the factory it's got a big old bumper on here and I still want to put headlights in it because you know obviously ultimate adventure we're driving on the road so I should have some headlights in there so I'll put the headlights back in there but then I'll be able to finish off hide all this ugliness right here I'll probably end up trimming a chunk of this off anyway for tire clearance but super happy with that I'm gonna call that a day so that's the end of today uh, tomorrow um, I don't really know what I'm going to work on tomorrow. Um, I really don't want to get too far with this. I've got, I get kind of ADD brain, you know, get sucked into something. And I really should have not even built those bumper brackets, but I just really wanted to see what it would look like because I had it in my head and drew it on the plasma table. So I think tomorrow I may jump back on the bomber, do a little bit of work on that. I also have to do a little bit of work on my Silverado as well. So uh, I'll probably knock that out tomorrow. Um, just plugging through the week as usual here in the shop. So we'll step away from the Colorado right now and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump on down to the bomber and I'm going to start working on the cooling system for this rock crawler. First step on uh, this radiator prep to go in the back of the bomber car is to go ahead and remove all the uh, water necks. So this is just basically a universal radiator. I got it from Summit Racing. It has you know a standard water neck on the top and the bottom. And what I need to do is replace it with this AN uh, fitting. Basically the way the bomber works, I'll come over here and show you. Um, What's going to happen is the coolant is going to come out of the motor up here. It's going to come back uh, on a dash 16 line and then it's going to go into one of these AN fittings that I'm going to weld onto uh, this piece of tube here. What I'll actually probably do is probably cut a hole and maybe even put that at a little bit of an angle like that and add a little piece of tube. Then what I'll do is I'll cut through this main tube, slide a filler piece in weld it all the way around and that'll basically block that coolant from flowing this way and this one will flow all the way to the back and then if you come all the way back here to the back of the chassis it's got these little uh kick outs right here that are part of that and then this is just going to sit right on top and we're going to tig weld that in right there that is how the coolant is going to transfer from the front to the back of the chassis on this car now i asked randy and that's how he does all these trail cars and i think it's it's pretty cool it's pretty common a lot of rock bouncers and stuff used to do it so i think it'll be fine and then the radiator he actually mounts perfectly flat back here on the chassis and then puts a fan and a shroud on the bottom side to protect it from debris and i'll do that later i think one thing i might do is instead of adding tabs to the side of the radiator to basically make it mount onto this tube. What I might do is actually just bend a piece of aluminum and make it so I actually mount it using some either heavy duty hose clamps or maybe some T-bolt clamps. And that way I'm not relying on, you know, a bolt uh, and a mount for, the, for a piece of aluminum into that tube. 
and that'll it'll allow for a little bit of expansion and contraction on the radiator if we have to and then remove it it'll just be two basically simple two clamps to to basically pop it off and, and put it back on i think it'll be pretty cool um this is the same size radiator that uh he runs in most of his rigs i mean it's a fairly decent size a big thick three inch core so hopefully cooling won't be a problem if it is i can always step up to a larger radiator later When you're working uh, with aluminum radiator like this, or any aluminum in general, you want to pay attention to consumables that you use on any type of rotary tool, like a four and a half inch hand grinder, which I used a lot. I use a lot of these fine grinders. Um, you saw when I cut off the old uh, water uh, outlet on the radiator, I used this little uh, metal wheel. It's not an abrasive wheel. I get this from my local uh, home center. It's designed to cut steel, aluminum, copper, anything like that. It's a diamond blade. And then this is a steel flap disc and this is an aluminum flap disc. There is a difference. I get all my uh, consumables, whether it's uh, grinding wheels or cutoff discs. I get them all from Benchmark Abrasives. Trust me, nothing is gonna make your life or you safer in a shop than a high quality grinding wheel or cutoff disc, whether it's for your chop saw, your hand grinder, anything. A high quality cutoff disc is safe. It's designed, if it gets a side load and it breaks, it's designed just to shatter into a million little pieces. The cheap ones that you get where you're trying to save a few bucks and they're like 90 cents a piece or whatever they are, even less than that, those are the ones that break and turn into basically ninja stars flying across the shop. You don't want that. Don't skimp out when it comes to grinding discs uh, or sanding discs or flap wheels or cutoff wheels, anything. High quality disc keeps you safe. Uh, so what I've done now is basically cut off the necks. I've got my uh, aluminum bungs also from Summit Racing. What I'll do is I'll basically fit them in there a little bit better. You can see I've got this little, this little nip right here. I gotta basically sand that down. I'll wipe all this down with some acetone, uh, wax and grease remover, and then I will basically just TIG weld these into place. And then this radiator is adapted to a Dash 16 uh, bung for the AN fittings. And that'll be basically be what hooks up to the chassis. And then I can start working on a couple of mounts. Now to weld this, I'm gonna be using my uh, Rebel ACDC uh, 205. This is probably one of my favorite machines in the shop. I've got a bunch of different Rebels as well as their other ESOB welders, but this is always my go-to and for good reason why. It's because, you know, it's got MIG, it's got flux core MIG, stick welding, uh, DC TIG, AC TIG, everything all in one machine. And it's as simple as just picking which process you want setting the polarity and you're ready to go uh, even comes with dual gas uh, solenoids in the back so i can carry two bottles this is a, a zt fab welding cart so basically it takes a toolbox from home depot in this case and comes with all the brackets to turn it into a welding cart um, this is like no joke everyone knows at this point in time that i work a lot with esob i do a lot of stuff for them but like put it all away if I wasn't working with them, I would still use this machine. This is my favorite machine in the shop. It's so small, it's so versatile, it's portable, it's great. It is probably the most used tool in this entire building. And for good reason, it does a great job. Okay, this is my radiate. This is my radiator mount right here. I've already imported it into sheet cam. What's going on over here? Oh, look at this. Here's a perfect example of a goofiness. Look, this is starting on the inside of this and I need it to start on the outside. So what it's going to actually do is messed up. It's going to cut here. So what I need to do is I need to, let's go file. Let's just re-import it. 
New job. Nope. File. New part. Maybe with the drawing. You have to go back and check the drawing. Okay. Let's, uh... We'll run the processor on it. Aluminum, 16 gauge. S1. And it's got... It's got another start going on over here for some reason. So that tells me that... It's probably a problem with the part. Let's go back to Bentec. I'll bet you it's down here. Yeah, look at that. That got goofy down there. I don't know why. Let's bring that so you can see right here. See, something goofy happened right here. I don't know what it is. Work. Did it do it over there too? No. All right, let's go edit, delete, let's delete that, delete. And now let's try to create an arc 0.25 fillet auto trim. Let's see if we can do it this time. There we go, fixed it. Now it's cleaned up again. So we'll go file, export, data, name that, save it, replace it. Okay, then we'll go back to sheet cam, file, new part, bring in that part. Okay, there it is, now it looks better. Okay, so you can see here the way it's going to work is this is the part that's going to mount to the chassis. I'm going to bend it right here, so you roll it up, and this will be the part that actually weld onto the radiator. So we got to uh, choose our operation. Once again, it's aluminum, 16 gauge. Okay, now it's better. See, it just has one start right here before it was coming over here for some reason to do another start. And that's because the picture had a corner and a goofy thing on it. But I'm going to put that on the sheet a little bit better. Perfect. Then we'll run the post processor and we'll cut it out. I've got the radiator tank spaced up uh, exactly three quarters of an inch here. And that will allow me to weld on these new little brackets. Basically, I'll weld them on either side. And that'll keep the radiator up off of the tube. What I'll do is I'll tack them, and then I'm going to go over and test fit the radiator. And if it looks like it's going to work, then I will weld it.